ordinance, and we've also submitted the more detailed plan showing all the view easements, the no-build easements, the planting easements that give me certain rights to plant to control the vegetation in part of Lot B. Both of those will be public records. They'll both be recorded in the Registry of Deeds so that any buyer of Lot B or of my house when I sell or my kids sell uh, won't be surprised by them, but we would prefer that those private arrangements stay private, and I think that is consistent with, with uh, the ordinance. Um, with that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Well, before we have any answers to any questions, I'd like to open a public hearing. Uh, the hearing is now open. Would anybody like to speak about this project? Since nobody's coming forward, we'll close the public hearing. And if you'd like to come back again, Mr. McCall, we'll get right to questions. Uh, does anybody on the board have some questions for Mr. McCall? The question I have is, what's, what's going on record as far as restrictions and what's not? I'm, I'm not sure I followed that. Okay. It sounds like most of what you are being is going on record as part of the easements, correct? Yes, sir. Everything, everything will be of record. Um, and both Mr. Galino on, on behalf of Sunrise Island and I would want them to be on record. I wouldn't want somebody buying lot B from Mr. Galino to start building a house that he thought he could build and then have me come along and say, whoa, you can't build there. So we do plan to record the, this drawing because this is what we hope sure. that you will sign. So it will have to be recorded under your ordinance. And also the more detailed uh, plan that has all of where the restrictions are that are private. Um, the advantage of, of recording both and not having you sign the more detailed easement, is, easement document is only that if it needs to be changed in the future, it, we don't have to go through this process again. But it's going to record as soon as you get this approval. That, that's right. But what well, you're saying is between the parties, you can that's right. you I mean, change that. I could, I could sell lot A to somebody. Mr. Galino sells lot B to somebody. Three years from now, they decide, geez, we'd like to move the view easement a little bit. And they don't have to come to the planning board to change the view easement. If they want to change the lot lines, they would have to come to you. That's, I guess, the distinction I'm looking for. Exactly. So the, the, the idea would be you want some flexi retain some flexibility in the easements themselves. In the view the lines, the lines on the ground uh, and on the plan will not change because those are going to regular those without, without us seeing it. Not that. without your permission, nor could the, the driveway easement for the, the top part of the driveway is still by easement. And obviously that could not change. Sure. That's, that's the Excellent. crux of what you've approved and that could not change without your action. Okay. Um, I, I do understand what you're saying. I apologize for No, it's all right. I, no. I, could, I couldn't hear very well, but the, the easement, is that between private? property owners or is that something the town has set and that's what you No, in, in, in my view, Mr. Eubner, has, it doesn't have any, the town has no role in it. Uh, I'm granting, for example, under your zoning ordinance, I could, I could build something down here, yeah. which would block the view from Mr. Galino's lot B of the marsh and the church. Okay. Mr. Galino would like that not to be built on. I would like to not build on it as an accommodation to Mr. Galino in exchange for Mr. Galino agreeing to shrink his building envelope. And that essentially is the private deal that we have. But I do view that as a private deal. This is the size of his lawful building envelope as it, as it is shrinking by losing, by, by transferring this property. It's actually shrinking farther in his private deal with me. But I view that, I view that as private. I view that as not, not as the town's business. And if for any reason that should change, I, don't, I, I would prefer not to spend $2,000 more to try to make a change and come be on TV again. That's my deal. It's a, it's a private deal, but it will be a registered easement? It will be a registered easement. Okay. And, and what we plan to record is, is the, the plan that you have. You have both plans with and without all the yeah. private view easements. Other questions? The recorded, uh, uh, I may, uh, the recorded building envelope will take into consideration all easements, yes or no? <clears throat> Uh, my preference, and I'm sure that it's in particular Mr. Galino's preference, is that the, the plan that you approve um, take into account the lot lines and your setback lines, which is this plan. 
we also plan to record, but without your signatures on it, a plan showing the practicable, practicable building envelope in light of all of the easements. So both will be recorded. What is, what is, what is the extent of restriction under your zoning ordinance, which is this plan, and what is the effect of the restrictions that exist as a result of the private easements? Other questions? I do have one question, and that is that about the septic system on Lot B, that's yes, a little bit complex. Do you want to apprise us of that? Because apparently there's going to be a septic system easement for Lot B. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. The um, uh, Lot B currently owns the strip of land that's to be conveyed to me. And one of the uh, satisfactory test pits was in the strip of land that is to be conveyed to me. If that, if Lot B chooses to put its septic system in that strip, then I've agreed that when it conveys this strip of land to me, uh, it may reserve, and Mr. Galena will reserve, uh, an easement to put his septic system in that strip of land with the land to be returned to its current grade once the septic system is installed. You did have an alternate location that it seems like, and, uh, somewhere I saw that on the sketches. I, I think he has another location that would be satisfactory. Obviously, um, Mr. Galino's concern, I assume, is that he doesn't want to find out that for some reason there's a problem with, with the other location, and now he's stuck without a location for his septic system. Mm -hmm. right, does this set any precedence as far as a few easements? Uh, no, I mean, private property owners can exchange view easements. The, the problem is that when this came in the first time, uh, and a butter came to my office and said, how come you didn't show all the easements? I said, these are all the easements. Are. No, there's not. There's other easements. We had no record of them. We didn't know they were around. And, you know, clearly that a butter was not satisfied, that it did not appear that we had a handle on what was going on in the property. So. While I understand the owner's concern with inflexibility, there's also a real serious issue about having accurate information. Um, you know, you're familiar with land use, and it's taken you a while for him to explain what he's proposing. Now imagine that your traditional lot buyer buys the lot and doesn't understand where things are supposed to go. Further. Uh, there's a real concern with showing a building envelope that isn't really the building envelope. There's, as Mr. Um, McCall has called it, the practical building envelope. I mean, I've had several conversations with the code enforcement officer on plans where there's only one building envelope, and it's shown very clearly. And any time it deviates from the setbacks, he becomes very concerned because he has to remember to go pull that file and look up the building envelope. Now, if he has to not only remember to look up the building envelope, but remember, oh, well, that's not the real building envelope. There's actually a different one that he's supposed to follow. When the house is originally built, it probably won't be a problem because this is all fairly new. But five years down the road, someone wants to put a deck on. You don't remember to check for the real building envelope, and all of a sudden, somebody doesn't comply with their approval, and then they're back before the planning board anyway. So uh, I, I certainly understand that this isn't what the applicants are proposing, but in terms of record keeping, uh, there's, there's some issues here. Uh, to go back to your question about the septic system, the location shown was the location that the applicant chose to submit a design for a septic system. If they wanted to redesign a new septic system in another location, they could submit a design any time and we could consider that. Uh, but right now, you only have one location on that lot where it's been demonstrated that adequate sanitary waste can be provided. So th those, are, those are, you know, it sounds, I know, very bureaucratic, but um, these t things tend to take on a life of their own once you've got a new lot owner that buys it and doesn't understand what they have, and all of a sudden, you'll be seeing this again. If I could comment on, on that point, it's an interesting point, because if there were a problem, 10 years from now, with, with either me, if I still own lot A, say building something down here where I'm, where I'm going to grant a view easement, or lot B building something in here where there's a view easement. That, 
and the approvals went out consistent with your zoning ordinances and consistent with the plan that we're asking you to sign, that should never come back to you because the enforcement of private view easements has nothing to do with any town, any town board. It doesn't have anything to do with the code enforcement officer. And that's why you're not going to show it on that plan when you actually record it. You're not going to show the view easements. Well, I am going to, it's going to be shown in what's recorded in the registry of deeds because, I, because both of us would want any buyer to be on notice of what their rights are. But those rights aren't enforceable with the code enforcement officer, with the planning board, with the zoning board appeals, with the town council. They're enforceable in the Cumberland County Superior Court. And, and that is the system that exists for how to, as, as Ms. O'Meara said, you can have private view easements. It does cause confusion because people think that the solution is to come to complain to Maureen because somebody's building something where there's a view easement. But, and, and Maureen's put in the difficult position of having to say, that unfortunately, that's just not my business. But that is the law. It's not, it's not Maureen's job. It's not Mr. Smith's job. It's not this board's job. Private view easements are enforceable in equity in the superior courts of this state, and that's where you go. And, and these two private property owners understand, both being lawyers, understand we want to be limited to going to Cumberland County Superior Court, and we want to be able to change it without coming back to municipal government to get approval. And, and I think that that's correct. I think Maureen's point is that the municipal government has to be knowledgeable about it because it does affect the building envelope, and that has to be enforced by the town. But it, it doesn't. But it doesn't. The zoning building envelope. That's right. It does. It does not affect what Mr. Smith should issue uh, permits for. I mean, for, legally speaking, if Mr. Galino said, "I want to build outside the view easement, and I want a building permit." Your zoning ordinance probably allows Mr. Galino to get that building permit, and then I go somewhere else to tell him he can't build there. Mm -hmm. I, go to, I go to court because, because you are not charged with enforcing private view easements okay. uh, or the like. You're charged with enforcing. Okay, point the code. well taken. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? Well, the one problem I see is that you two are lawyers. Somebody's going to come along perhaps someday. I'm not saying that we're not going to grant permission, but or that we're not going to, you know, we're going to just let you submit the second <coughs> plan to us and file the first one privately, publicly in court, but that people aren't lawyers and somebody's going to come along and buy this and this is complicated I mean we've been sitting on the planning board for a while and I had to read this pretty carefully I've been on the planning board this is my sixth year and I had to read this really carefully and have been involved in real estate transactions somebody's going to come along and they're not going to know as much and this is really complicated and they can end up in a lawsuit over this and I, I'm not sure that from a private point of view that's not that we have any control over that necessarily but that's prudent well, that, I think you're making a very good point, and I've lived in town for 23 years, and I, got, I went to college for four years and three years of law school, and I practiced law for a long time. And I've read your zoning ordinance, and That's it's not crazy. Okay. I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> the, the simplification that you have here, I, I think, I think the, you're raising a good practical concern, and, and Mr. Galino has that concern. His property is for sale. He doesn't, he doesn't want confusion. He wants, he wants a buyer who understands what he's buying, and, and, he, and he plans to make it simple, and he certainly plans to make disclosure. But the big advantage with having the private arrangement that we have here is there's just two of us. It's your next-door neighbor. If, if there's a house on Lot B and I'm selling Lot A, the buyer is nuts if he, doesn't, if he doesn't talk to me and talk to the owner of Lot B and vice versa. I mean, that's, good neighbors should work this out by by understanding their neighbors, and hopefully it'll work that way. Peter? I, I do see some value in preserving flexibility, especially where the second house isn't even built yet. I mean, it seems to me it would make some sense uh, to allow a potential new buyer maybe to work something out that you two haven't thought of uh, before he or she puts up a house. So, I mean, I, conceptually, I understand it. I also understand Maureen and Bruce's practical concern that they're in the middle when the new buyer says, after they've bought it, you know, finds out that they can't, you know, add the deck for two stories because it blocks. It. But I, I think generally, I think it's a better idea to have 
the private easements uh, sort of I mean, off the record isn't the right word because initially you are putting it on the record. You just not, it's just it's, well, it's just not part of the plan and the approval. I mean, that's my first point. The second point I want to make is, I mean, what's our review here, Maureen? I mean, this is a private, a modification and amendment to a private access way permit. I mean, it seems to me our review is pretty limited. Under the, yeah, you, you have no authority to, to determine whether the easements are appropriate right. or not. What you do have authority to do is to establish a building envelope. Right. To determine that so, there's under yes, to, well, no, but you know, you have established building envelopes in the past that not just reflect setbacks, mm -hmm. but reflects other constraints on the site. But other zone, uh, other constraints, constraints on the site, not necessarily zoning. No, no, it can be other constraints on the site. Okay. I mean, you've done that in the past. You've saved trees. You've you've looked at issues with with lots of different things. So there is an opportunity to uh, look at the, the shape of the building envelope. And it's an important issue as well, because you usually look at the building envelope to make sure that it realistically can fit a home in it. Um, and then you also Real look home. at the, yeah, <laughs> well. A saleable home. Yeah. And then you, you do look at things like sanitary waste disposal. And, sure. and there are other things you look at. Those other things, I think, have already been addressed in the prior approval. Right. So in my opinion that the real key points for this amendment are not the access because that's not changing uh, yeah. but the building envelope and the sanitary waste disposal and the, let's let me take the easy one first i mean the sanitary waste disposal it, the, the cross having it on different lots not that unusual an arrangement is it i mean is that the concern here? i would i i question whether it's a reasonable approach sure. i really seriously do especially where there seems to be enough land oh, to sure. keep it on the lot well, maybe that's uh, you know, the first question. I mean, as a lawyer, you know, the more you complicate things, the more opportunity there is for misunderstandings in the future. Right. I'm, I'm I mean, lot configuration is something that the planning board does have authority to look at. But it, without asking, I'm, I'm guessing they, they, they have a set of uh, tests already, and that's one of the reasons you didn't want to try to put it on, move it to back to its original lot. I don't believe the applicant has invested oh. in that. Yeah. Oh. Go right ahead. Sure. You want to step up, please, and introduce yourself? Yeah, I mean, technically, this is two applicants. Both of you are applicants, correct? Um, let me just introduce myself, and I can answer sure. the question. I'm Len Galino. Mm. I'm a managing partner of Sunrise Island LLC, as Ms. McCall indicated. And of course, I've been representing Sunrise Island LLC in these negotiations with Ed. Technically, Ed submitted the application, but we both have a vested interest in seeing the application go forward. Uh, we are in agreement on how we want to handle this. And to try to address um, a few of the concerns that have been raised, first, as far as the uh, wisdom of either requiring, uh, allowing for this to be signed, or going with a different, uh, more complicated plan that reflects the bill. The building envelope is reflected on the easement plan. I would point out to you that I think it gets complicated to uh, require the other plan to be recorded with the signatures of the town on it. Now, the thing you could do is to strip out all the information about the easements on the plan, but then that begs the question of why is the setback 45 feet on one place and 30 on the other on the other side? Um, and the point it, I think that is important to keep in mind is while you may have approved lesser building envelopes, envelopes than setbacks require in other circumstances, my guess is that that related to the unique characteristics of that lot. In other words, you were trying to preserve a tree or a natural configuration because of an object, objection of an abutter to make sure there was protection of uh, shielding or, or um, um, bordering of other parcels to protect their views. In this case, the only justification that's put forward for changing the lot line, the building envelope line, is the fact that there's a private agreement between Ed and I. And to me, that private agreement shouldn't be a justification for, at the town level, expanding the setback requirement. I mean, there's nothing in the ordinance that suggests that's appropriate. So this is not a situation where you're trying to protect some kind of characteristic to the town that is necessary that you've decided. It's merely for ministerial convenience of the code enforcement officer to have a plan 
in his file with your signatures on it. It's just as easy, I submit to you, to not only have that plan in his file, but also to have a plan, a copy of the plan that we've submitted to you that we are going to record. And as a compromise of this situation, what I'd propose is that we will deliver to the code enforcement officer a certified copy from the registry of the plan that Ed and I record so that he has a recorded copy of that plan in his file so that if anything ever comes forward in the future, he readily has access to that recorded plan so he knows what the building envelope is so that he's not you know, caught with, uh, caught with his pants down in the sense that he approves a building permit in the area that's encroach, that encroaches on the private easement between us. The reason why I think the flexibility is important is because while Ed and I are around, there's really not going to be a problem. We're both lawyers. We're both very courteous about contacting each other and letting each other know what's going on, as we've done with the neighbors. And so we totally understand the need for notice, advance notice. And uh, I'm sure we'll continue to go that way. However, what may likely happen is we agree to a, uh, 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 this plan, it gets approved, we build, or my buyer builds, and then 10 years down the road, the buyer comes along and says, gee, I want to put a deck on. And he walks up to the then owner of lot A, which might be Ed or it might be somebody else, and says, you know, I just want to put a deck on. The deck's only going to be five feet high. It's going to technically go over into the view easement area. Is that going to be a problem? And knowing Ed, he's probably going to say, no, that's not a problem. And it's much easier once you know what the issue is that's proposed to be constructed to make those kind of decisions. And to require that person then to come all the way back and go through all this again, I submit to you is, you know, it's kind of a little bit of overkill, especially when we're not trying to protect any, uh, you know, characteristic to the property uh, in this process that we've put forth here. So I would suggest to you that that should take care of all those issues. As far as the septic goes, um, the septic area is, there is a couple test pits drilled. There's the B3 test pit, the B5 test pit. Um, we've preserved this area over here where B3 is, because uh, that, was, that was a good spot. That was a good test. B5 was also a good spot. But since we're reducing the size of the building envelope so much, where B5 is, it may totally uh, uh, make it very difficult to put a house in there and a septic system there. So we want to preserve the ability to put a septic over where B5 is. And it may and not go there. It may not go there. But it, it shouldn't be, once again, I don't see the concern because right now we have approval since B, lot B currently owns where B5 is, the septic could go there now. We've preserved in the agreement with Ed the ability to put a septic there. So it's really a distinction without a difference. You know, the septics could go there now, could go there later. And we've adequately allowed for that in the written language of the agreement between Ed and I. And one other point I would like to point out is that not only are we going to record this plan, not only are we going to record the other uh, detailed easement plan that's in front of you, but the deeds that Ed and I are going to swap <coughs> for this A and B, the two land swap areas, will contain explicit detailed description of the terms and conditions of each of the easements that are granted. So anybody that goes to buy this is going to have full disclosure of all the easements, full disclosure of what you've approved and have not approved. And uh, you know, while it's true, it's somewhat complicated, there's very few people, I think, that buy a house that don't have a title company at least review what they're buying, they get the deed, and they will see when they go to the registry, their title company is going to tell you, you've got to be aware, there's this recorded plan with all these easements on. Here's the deeds with all the detailed description of what the easements say. So there's going to be full disclosure for everybody. And I, so I think it should adequately take care of any issues. And if it's too complicated, for anybody to consider, uh, analyze themselves. I'm sure they'll ask for, for proper advice to interpret the um, documents. So I think it's uh, adequately dealt with. And it does, I think, comport with what I think the planning board's goal should be, which is to minimize the impact 
on views and um, in the area. Right now, given the size of this property, we could probably build six, 7,000 square foot property, which would block Ed's view, would maybe impact on the Curtis's view over here. Uh, and what we're doing is agreeing to move it over this way, which is a little bit more tucked in behind the trees. There's a lot of trees in this area, trees coming down the side here. And that, I think, benefits everybody by reducing the size of that house. And further, it also benefits everyone, I think, because in return, Ed is agreeing to give a view easement down this way, which also eliminates the possibility somebody's going to build down in this area. So I think for the perspective of the town's planning board's goal, which I think is the unspoken goal, or the, what everybody wants to see is minimizing visual impacts on the, on the town, I think this deal also um, moves in that direction because it quite honestly restricts the size of that house rather than a four or five thousand square foot house maybe it's more appropriate to put a 2500 to a three thousand square foot house which really comports more with the size of ed's house and the size of the house next to him which is owned by um braun by the bronze which is also a modest size house can i just ask a sure. question and len i'm interested in your perspective on this and maureen as well i am um, fully support the flexibility in the easements and am completely fine with it because everything's going to be recorded and when a title search is done, the, those burdens and easements will come up. However, I've got a little bit of discomfort that has to do with the integrity of our process to sign a plan that we know doesn't represent burdens to the property that are shown somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if a way around that would be to simply make note on the plan that we sign that the property is burdened by easements, no build areas, just a notation on the side recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. I mean, just C, C plan C recorded plan, at such and whatever so. it is. And that way we have at least acknowledged that we are aware that there are other burdens on the property. They're not shown there. We know that, but there's a notation made. And I fully realize that the building envelope is not, no build areas do not have to do with the zoning building envelope that we deal with. I, I thought of that too. That I thought of that too. I guess the question of that then becomes, what does that mean? Does it mean you blessed? If you change. If we change any of those easements? Refer to on the plan, is it technically an amendment to the well, plan. Well, and I don't know that. That's really why what I'm wondering um, if Maureen has a perspective. Or is that a note for information only to exactly. you know, be Exactly. Simply you know, a reference. Beware. Not something that is part being the memorialized. It's not, part as it's not part of the approved plan. It's simply a notation. How about if we just said, uh, for information purposes only, see book and page, blank and blank. That's all I'm asking. It seems to at least acknowledge that we have been aware of the integrity of the process and understand that there is stuff, for lack of a better word, not shown here. We know that. You can find it someplace else. I just have a problem with approving a plan that we know doesn't have things on it that are going to impact plans that somebody may have who may not be knowledgeable, who may not be dealing with the two of you because you've decided to retire to Bimini or something. Well, you, the, one thing, the one thing to keep in mind is anybody who buys the property will be totally on notice because they're going to do a registry search. Right. And when they do the search, their title company is going to say, you should be aware. There's this plan and there's the other plan. So anybody's going to see that other plan. And I almost think it would True. be cleaner because the one thing you've got to keep in mind. If they know what they're looking at. I mean. Remember, well, we're the knowledgeable people. Not yeah. everybody gets what they're right. reading on their title. Well, adding the, the, the one thing that the adding the notation may, from a legal perspective, anything may create more questions than it answers, because then the question is, well, did the town look at each of one of those easements? I mean, I don't think you want the burden on your shoulders of studying all those easements and totally understanding all those easements. Well, that's why I asked the question, whether that's yeah. something that yeah. is reasonable yeah. I think from both your standpoint <coughs> and from ours. Well, 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 I, if I, might, I, I yeah. think it's an excellent suggestion if it were phrased in something like uh, uh, other, private agreement, other private agreements may restrict the permiss permissible building envelope further. Then a buyer is on notice. Then a buyer can't come to you five years from now and say, 
I bought this property thinking I was going to get a 7,000 square foot house because you signed the something that you signed that I could, yeah. and I, now, I, now I get a 3,000 square foot house, and I'm mad at you. Mm -hmm. now, now, you, now you have made full disclosure that what you approved um, may not reflect further restrictions that are purely private. And I think that's the gist of what you have in mind. That's it's exactly it. Maureen, yep. do you have any thoughts or perspective on this? <laughs> and if you do, would you share them? <laughs> you know, these, these easements apparently existed when this came forward the first time. Can you speak louder, Maureen? These, some, at least some of these easements existed when this came forward the first time. With the private easements. No, no, that's not accurate. Okay. The, when, and, when, we, and when the abutter came to me and said, what about the view easements? What about this? What, when, when this, we, this, this is my concern. And I, you know, yeah. I, I understand you want your flexibility, and I'm just a bureaucrat who you know, wants to dot every I and cross every T. But you know, when, when someone has just plunked $200,000 down on a lot, and they go down to their town hall, and they say, how come I can't do this? They get very, very irate. And it's not because I'm not used to being yelled at, because I am. <laughs> but it's not really very good service to the lot buyers. And I understand the whole buyer beware, but the reality is most people do not retain an attorney when they buy a lot. For all. To put up a house? To put yeah. up a house. I am not I'm kidding. Stunned. I mean, I mean they, not, the things people don't understand could fill up the rest of the month. But, but Mr. Yeah. McCall suggested, I mean, at least once you've put on the plan that there are yeah. other things out there, I mean, you can point to the plan and say, look, this is what we approved. It points you in the direction of, of looking at the registry you know, record. How can you not? I mean, I guess I, you know, that is sort well, of tough. You know, if plus, plus, I mean, the flip side to what Attorney McCall was saying earlier about having the plan in, in the code enforcement officer's possession. I mean, I don't think I want to burden him with enforcing private easement, you know, private agreements in a way that doesn't that make the problem worse? If we simply have our recorded <coughs> plan that follows our zoning ordinance strictly and has a pointer to this, this uh, private agreement, you know, look at the record. And, you know, don't mean look and at the record in case you're not sure. Um, I've explained I think that, that keeps it, uh, the problem away from the town. Yeah, uh, but I've explained to people that that's a private easement and you need to <coughs> research it yourself. You need to retain your own counsel. Usually don't take it very well. I understand. And the but answer how do we stop the, that without the assuming answer, the full right, burden of the being The answer they're going to give me is, is the planning board approved this plan. Under the zoning ordinance. Yeah, you know. I understand. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> and once, that's the once thing. You, and I think, I think Mrs. Richardson brought up a very good point. The board has its name on it now. If this was just two lots that these two people had divided up and done their own thing with, you know, good luck, have fun. But once you step in, it is more burdensome. I mean, this is necessarily a lot that is going to be more burdened than a traditional lot because it doesn't meet the zoning requirements. It does not have the frontage that is required under the current zoning ordinance, which is why the planning board has the authority to do this review. The private access way. The private access where, review. Where it doesn't it give you the authority to do everything, but right. it does say you can look at lot configuration, you can look at, you have to show a building envelope, you have to show septic systems or connections to the sewer. So let's be clear, it is not a lot that complies with the, with the zoning as of right. And to just make one more comment, you had said, you know, if we have this note that refers to this other plan, My, it made me think, what if the, you know, what if five years down the road, the two property owners do decide to change the view easement and they write something up and they never record it. Or they record it, but they never put a reference to the prior easement, which I don't think they're, they're required to do. I know that when the planning board approves a subdivision and then you approve an amend, you, they have to come back to you sure. to amend the subdivision. Mm -hmm. And the main requirement on the subdivision amendment is there has to be a note that gives the book and page of the original subdivision approval. So you create that chain of record. And I think when that- you, But you, when you run the chain of the property owners, you're gonna pick that up. So, but, so they, but what if they don't record the easement? Is it still legal? It's not enforceable it's against enforceable. the third party. I mean, if it's not on record, it's only enforceable between the parties. I just hope, it, you know, it, you need yeah. to do what you feel is right. I guarantee you, we will be back <laughs> looking at this well, one again. I, I, I'm as much concerned about putting the wall in front of the town's responsibility. I don't want to assume too much responsibility from the, C, from the CEO's perspective because I don't think wandering outside of the zoning code is some direction the town wants to go in. 
I mean, that's part of the problem we've had in the past where, where we can't act as private arbitrators between private people who have agreements. What I, I would just add, uh, my last comment on the situation is I think Ed's suggestion is acceptable to me, and I think it would put folks on notice if we made it clear on the plan you approve that they should take note that there's another plan recorded with private easements on it. I actually have another question. Sure. I don't have as much faith in people as you claim to have. And, and as lawyers, I'm not sure that you would either, but um, I, I think people are often naive and they, in their best, they do the best they can, but they make mistakes. And then they have to hire lawyers, which sometimes muck up things more than it would have beforehand, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I, I am concerned about the fact that a lot of this building envelope, and we do have control over the building envelope, is unbuildable. It is currently unbuildable by your private agreements. You have just said you're going to sell this lot, and you've got a building envelope on it that's not buildable. Now, I'm curious as to well, why that building envelope isn't, why doesn't it just about right next to that 250-foot You've got more feet down there, and you've got more room on the side. I don't remember the configuration of the land or if we ever looked at it. Did we ever do a site walk there? I can't remember. No. Nope. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there a reason? I mean, is, is the land unacceptable to build on? Is it flat? Is it... I'm fixed? sorry. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. You've got more room that the building envelope could actually go. You could move the building envelope. At the southern you, extreme? Yeah, the southern extreme. The reason, the reason I assume it was ended where it was ended is because further south or southwest it might be. Okay. It's the uh, conservation easement. There's a conservation easement down here. Yes, but the conservation easement doesn't start yet. There. It, it, you oh, have I'm to have a setback. We agreed to, we, we, that, that you need a set, we gave the town hello, a setback hello. from that, um, from that, um, line right there. Right there is the line for the um, conservation easement and we put this line here. Uh, you can see where the flood zone line is. Mm -hmm. It was just a, uh, in designing the lot, we just made a reasonable comfortable space from the flood line. So we just put it up there. You wouldn't want to build down there. It's pretty, it gets pretty wet at that flood line. And what about the no build zone to the north? The no build zone to the north. No build area. You mean on the detailed easement plan? Yes. That's the easement we're going to put in place. That is not currently in place. One thing you should understand is this private easement deal between Ed and I is not currently in place. It's all subject to your approval. But I don't understand. Land. Why is that a no build area? Because Ed wanted to push the, he asked us to push the building envelope down away from his house a little bit more to give more of a buffer between his house and the building envelope for the new house. So the intent is to try to put it in the most unobtrusive spot possible on the lot, <coughs> which I think we've succeeded in doing. So in reality, the building envelope is considerably smaller than the building envelope you're showing on. Right. I think before you could have built a mansion, now you build a nice, you know, average size house. Is there a problem with showing and we do have control over this, the actual building envelope. Um, I, I know your concern. You're not going to be involved probably someday if somebody wants to build a deck on it. Right. Uh, they will know when they buy it. They can't build outside that building envelope. They can't hear us. The, um, we have submitted those two plans. It requires us to go back and have the surveyor draw, redraw the plan, and then it would preclude us if we came down the road and the, buy, the buyer, myself, if I decide to build there, or a buyer, that if my buyer builds there, it would require somebody to come back, for instance, to put a deck on. So our preference would be to have the planning board approve the, this plan. Uh, are you saying that if, if the question is, you know, uh, that's the only way we can get approval. I'm happy to talk to Ed about that. I'm not saying anything. I'm just raising questions. Yeah. I mean, certainly we'd prefer to have this plan approved and then have a notation on it that advises anybody to make sure they take a look at the full private easement plan that will also be recorded. Oh. 
Barbara, I would be in favor of um, modifying the building envelope to represent the agreements that would be existing for the for the private viewing. I. I live in a world that's complicated enough. It would be nice to go to one plan and understand uh, what the issues are. I, I wonder out loud if the town would occur any liability if five years down the road the code enforcement officer were to grant a building permit best based on what he thinks is the most available information, but yet the agreement has somehow changed. Um, I don't know that. I don't, I don't live in the world of view easements, but my, my opinion is, is if there is an opportunity to put as much factual information on a plan that that is the direction that the board should head. I very much agree with you. Are there other questions or other? Well, I think that that would be my preference overall to have everything on a plan as Paul has just stated. I do though have an understanding of the flexibility that two private owners want to try to maintain um, and also know that those would be found by a potential buyer with a title search. But, and, but I am concerned yep. about the... And, 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 I, and I understand that again, but I, I go back to the issue of the flexibility absolutely impacts where the structure can be built on the property. Well, that's what, property. I, was just, that's what I was just about to complete and the sentence with, that I do understand that there is, there is a, a missing link there between the <coughs> building permits here Yep. and the plans that are recorded that would require additional research that Mr. Smith may not do, I suspect he doesn't do, a full title search on, on a property before he issues a building permit. Right. So I understand the, I, I certainly understand and support that. Yeah, I, think, I think the burden has to be on you if you want to change the plan in the future in a way that changes the building envelope. I think the full building envelope, the way it's restricted by even your private view easements has to be what's recorded right here. It has to be what's approved. I also think you need to have an easement agreement, a formal easement agreement about that septic. <clears throat> yeah, that, that would be on the We do. We do, and we've, we've submitted that to Maureen. <clears throat> so where do we go from here? Well, it's up to the applicant has. Um, if I might, um, everything that was said is fully acceptable to me, um, noting one ambiguity from something that Ms. Richardson said, and that was what I understood the other comments to be was that what would be signed by the board and recorded would be a modified plan consistent with what Maureen has but with the detail concerning the various no planting, view, uh, planting, easements deleted, except to the extent that the building envelope for lot B would be drawn as affected by those easements, so that if we wanted to change which trees got cut down or which trees could be planted, that would not require us to come back to the board because that wouldn't appear to have been approved by the board. Which means you, as long as you're staying within that existing envelope. That's right. In other words, the, if, the, if the building envelope were <clears throat> reconfigured to be consistent with the view easements, the no-build easements, uh, and the planting easements that we're going to exchange, we wouldn't have to show all those individual where I get, I can, I get to plant certain bushes in certain places. And, I, and if those stayed private, because we could certainly change our minds on which bushes go where. I, I, that's fine. And I think yeah, that I actually complies with what the code requires. I mean, it says you're supposed to depict the building envelope that complies with three things. The setback requirements of the district, which we all agree on. Natural constraints, which apparently there aren't any natural constraints here. But then the last one says that the house site will be buffered from abutting residential properties. That's correct. And I would suggest that, you know, once you start going into easements that do that, I think we have to put on the plan that what you just described, mm -hmm. which is fine. And I, I would just uh, add one point to Ed's description of what's going to be on the plan. I would also assume, based upon my earlier conversations with Maureen, that on the plan that you're going to sign, we should also reflect this, where the septic easement is. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. I, th I think what we're saying is 
that you will change the building envelope so that the building envelope stays out of those easements altogether. And you would essentially submit the second plan with a different building envelope and then just the septic easement. Right. The rest of the easements would have nothing to do with us right. whatsoever. Right. We'd eliminate all the cross-hatching except in the septic easement area. And of course, where the road access is, that easement will be still reflected. And the building envelope will be as reflected, will be the same size as, as on the more detailed easement plan. And you wouldn't even have to put a note or anything on. Yeah, no note. And that well, you wouldn't need the note then. But the, yeah. uh, the change yeah. in the building envelope takes care of the yeah. issues that I had around the integrity of the process and acknowledging the easements. So that takes care of that. Assuming the uh, board would have approved that, what would be the process for getting... I was just about ready to ask that because that's sort of key to this whole thing. Yeah. Is the um, my, my assumption would be that between now and next Tuesday, you would endeavor to get a revised plan to me. and then We could have it in a day or two. The planning board does have a workshop next Tuesday night, and I would ask you to sign the plan at that time. That's great. Thank you. That would be fine. So then do we have, um, I, I have to confess, I mixed up something. The public hearing is actually for the next, was for the next uh, item on the agenda. And I got everything out of order, so I really apologize. And so I guess we have to sort of back up and say, do we need a site walk or a public hearing? We had that one person who called some time ago, Maureen. And I, oh, OK. OK. And, and perhaps we took care of any problems by, by changing the building envelope. Um, does anybody think they need a site walk, or should we just go on with the proposal here with the? No, we don't need a site walk. I'm okay. that one. Can, can we entertain? A, are you Do you have one, Peter? What? The <laughs> motion. <laughs> I see you. Sure. I'll there. Okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, I have a motion for the board to consider. Um, I move that we make the following findings of fact. Uh, uh, Number one, Ed McCall and Sunrise Island LLC would like to amend a previously approved private access way permit for a new lot located south of an existing home at 78 Wealth Road, which requires a private access way permit under section 19-7-9. Two, the septic system designed for lot B would be located on lot A with an easement for lot B. Three. When the I don't think three is relevant anymore, is it? No. Is it? Okay. When a building permit application is submitted for lot B, the code enforcement officer will likely consult the planning board approved plan to confirm building envelope location. Four, the application substantially complies with sections 19-7-9 private access way permit. Uh, therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, and do I want to say in the plan to be submitted? Mm -hmm. No, you're okay. Okay. The application of Ed McCall and Sunrise Island LLC to amend a previously approved private access way permit for a new lot located south of an existing home located at 78 Wells Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the septic system easement for lot B located on lot A be submitted. Two, that the building envelope be redrawn on the approved plan so that no area that is restricted from building construction is included within the envelope. And three, that there'll be no issue of a building permit nor recording of this approval for either lot A or B until plans and materials have been submitted to comply with the above conditions. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, everyone in favor? Was a second? <laughs> yep. yep. I missed that. A anybody opposed? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, now we have to consider the uh, Elder Care Wetland Zoning Amendment. Owens McCall come up and just introduce a bit to us before we take the draft amendment. And then we'll have the public hearing. Good evening. Thank you for hearing me tonight. I, I won't talk about view easements tonight. <laughs> uh, we're, I'm here tonight on behalf of uh, Wooly Morris Architects in Cannon Creek Development. Um, we've been to the board a few times already. Uh, I've been to the council uh, once uh, regarding a proposed zone change. Uh, this is in regard to the Viking Nursing Home, uh, which is located here on a five acre parcel. Um, as everybody knows from prior discussions, uh, the facility um, is not being used currently, uh, is abandoned, and uh, Cannon Creek Development um, has an interest in uh, redeveloping that site uh, to accommodate 55 assisted living um, units and 40 independent uh, living units. Uh, the, that will, uh, the facility was constructed in two phases originally. Uh, one was in uh, the 1970s and one in the 1990s. Uh, the 1970s piece is proposed to be uh, removed and rebuilt. Uh, it's a two-story facility and that piece would accommodate the 40 uh, independent care uh, units. Uh, the facility will have a kitchen. Uh, the project will um, have on-site services such as a meal plan, uh, kitchen facilities for folks uh, to use. Because it's independent care and basically elder care apartments on one piece, the apartments will have their own kitchens. They'll have access to use the kitchen if they so choose or the common dining area. And then the other piece, the independent or uh, the assisted living piece, uh, those folks are more uh, uh, relying on the kitchen facilities, the services that they provide at the facility. They're generally in their 70s and 80s, uh, single folks, uh, most of them, um, and no longer can really function without having some, some care provided. Uh, we do need to pursue a zone change for this for a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, a density change. Um, as indicated in Maureen's uh, staff report, what we're looking for uh, and I think there's some proposed language, is to change the uh, density from uh, one unit per 3,500 square feet to one unit per 2,500 square feet, or one bed per uh, 2,100 square feet instead of what was previously 2,500 square feet. Uh, we're not actually, as, as I looked at the old site plan, I don't think we're actually increasing the overall density uh, of the units because I think it was approved for originally like 120 beds on the facility, but the zoning has since changed uh, since when it was originally approved. Uh, so we, but we would like to go back uh, in time and make some changes to that. The other piece to that is, is since uh, the time that this project was approved, the town adopted uh, uh, wetland zoning, uh, RP1 and RP2 wetland districts. Uh, and this site, this par parcel land does have RP1 wetlands on it. And as a result, there is a 250 foot buffer uh, from those wetlands, which encompasses a portion of the existing developed site. And under the ordinance, you're allowed to expand uh, a non-conforming use, which this now is, is a non-conforming use. And you bet you're only allowed to expand it by 25%. In order to make this work, what we would like to do um, is um, expand to allow for a second floor. We're not actually increasing the building footprint. In fact, we're reducing uh, the building footprint uh, on the project. So that piece of it actually goes down, but the volume does go up a little bit uh, to accommodate that second floor. And that's a piece of the proposed uh, zone change, which is indicated 
um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the proposed language. The site is served by public water and sewer. Uh, and looking at it, this project uh, is uh, consistent with what we uh, understand to be the goals of the comprehensive plan and the update. Uh, basically encouraging diversity of housing and to provide for the aging um, citizens and residents. Uh, so we think that it provides a unique opportunity to take this existing building, which is vacated now, um, improve upon it, rebuild a portion of it, and then reoccupy it. Uh, and again, where we're on public sewer and water, we're not proposing any on-site wastewater, we're not proposing any on-site um, really changes other than uh, shrinking the footprint. We'll do some uh, landscaping and some work around the parking lots when we do reconstruct that and um, basically occupy what's there now. And in order to do that, uh, we do need to uh, go through a zone change. Uh, we appreciate meeting with the board at the workshop level. Uh, we now need uh, the board's input. I believe Maureen to go back to council. Is that the correct procedure? Um, and then once it goes to council, if it does get approved or if the board here recommends it going on the council, we will be back to the planning board to go through site plan review. So then you'll come back to see the full building plans, the site plans, the landscaping, all of that. So we will be back for the detailed design. And that's the project in a nutshell. I'm here to try to answer any questions you may have and uh, try to go forward. Thank you. Before we ask any questions, we will open. Public hearing. Would anybody like to speak? Well, since nobody wants to speak, we'll close the public hearing. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. McCullough? would like to reassure the public here and any public that's listening that when this plan is submitted there'll be traffic studies and there'll be all sorts of things and they'll be taking a very careful look again in any yep. impervious surface so this is only the very very beginning of this project and you're correct in the comprehensive plan we are recommending strongly that we have um, more different types of housing and certainly housing for people who are aging in this community. We have one of the older communities in Maine. So if we have no questions from the board, since we've all talked about this quite a bit before, do we have, um, I guess, do we have a motion for the board to consider? Ready? Jim? Uh, motion uh, be ordered that based on the draft text, the planning board uh, recommends the elder care density amendment and wetland nonconformance amendment to the town council for adoption. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We'd like to welcome Councillor Jim Rowe to the meeting and we'd like to say that it's the Town Council's goal to attend uh, one meeting of each board in commission and we appreciate your being here to see what we are about. Thank you so much. Motion, Motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Instinctive. Yeah. <laughs> Just go. So, so the Council's going to... Sure. Who seconded it? Sorry, I forgot that. I wonder why you're doing that. You know what? That's going to be a great one. I'm not sure it doesn't matter, but it's only on the phone.